So for the past couple of weeks we've been getting the body and the neck ready for finishing and we are pretty much there with them. However, I did say I was expecting some exciting news on that front and it's finally time to reveal what that is. Now I've been doing YouTube for quite a little time now, about four and a half years, and for much of that time I've been contacted by numerous companies who want me to work with them and want me to promote their products. However, the first time this happened, I kind of looked at the product and thought, really doesn't match with what I do. So I made the decision then that I was only going to work with companies that had something to do with what I do on the channel and something in common with the people that watch my videos. So I didn't really see any point in promoting tents and donkey harnesses to you. I'm solely interested in things to do with guitar building. This all changed a couple of weeks ago when I was contacted by a company that specialise in manufacturing and distributing a range of guitar finishes and associated items and for me this seemed like a really good fit with what I do and it seemed especially relevant to me because ever since I've been building guitars being able to reliably get hold of finishing products has always been a little bit of an issue. When I first started getting hold of nitrocellulose guitar paints was kind of next to impossible in the UK. You could sometimes get clear but if you wanted to tint it you were messing about with stains and tints and stuff and it was very unreliable took a lot of time and in the end it cost a lot of money because you ended up throwing quite a lot of stuff away because you just messed it up. It has got a little bit better with time but I still struggle to find a one-stop solution for all my finishing supplies and this is where Night All Act stands out for me. When they contacted me I jumped straight onto their website and had a look and I was really impressed with like the range of stuff they've got available. So they've got a full range of nitrocellulose stuff, they've got a lot of water-based stuff and they will also supply all the ancillaries that you need to do your finishing job. So we had a quick conversation about all of the projects that I've got on at the moment and they agreed to send me out some stuff so that I can try it out and let you guys know what I feel about it. And to that end I have a great big box on the bench which I haven't opened yet, so we'll dig into it and we'll see what we think. And before we get into the box, I have to say that the packaging is really, really good. And the delivery time was quite short. It came via UPS and I had really good tracking information. So I was really up to date with where everything was. I can see through the carry handles that it's full of packaging noodles. So I'm very hopeful that there won't be any damage to anything. Just Get it open and see what we've got. Okay, so the first thing we've got is something called Relic Patina. Masking tape. Not blue. Who knew? A pot of conductive shielding paint, which I will be using on the current Stratocaster build. So this is some cutting compound for when we're polishing the guitar up after painting, and this is a finer grade of that. There's a whole range of sanding products there. So I've got those in 3000, 2000, 1500 and 1000 and then we've got some sanding sheets in 240 and 400 grits. Some thinners. One tin of paint some white primer, some amber clear for neck purposes, some clear coat. Now this is the Relic gloss clear coat. We'll get into that a little bit more at the painting stage. And another tin of paint, which I'm not going to discuss yet because that's not even for this project. That's for a little bit further down the line. And I don't want to give too much away. Colour chart detailing all the various colours and finishes that are available. And they even sent me a t-shirt. So, very happy with that. Okay, so we can have a look at some of these in a little bit more detail now. And the one thing that has struck me immediately is the actual size of the packages that you can get. This is 200ml. Of conductive shielding paint I've only ever seen it in tiny tiny little containers before and if you are doing any volume of work you know having a bigger bottle is actually a benefit you're not messing around constantly ordering stuff and obviously if you can buy it in bulk to a certain extent 
it's going to work out cheaper isn't it this relic patina without giving too much away is a product they've designed so that if you are doing a relic job on a guitar sometimes you will rub through the finish to the bare wood which doesn't really give the look you're going for because that bare wood will then be really clean and pristine looking and that doesn't really work with the kind of vintage vibe that you're trying to achieve so this has been designed for when you do go through to bare wood you can put a bit of this on and it will darken it down and give it an aged look two grades of cutting compound now i've been using the same polishing compound for probably 30 years and while i don't believe there's anything wrong with it i'm always willing to try new stuff And that feels kind of like a medium coarseness of compound to me. And that feels a lot finer. So it'd be interesting to see how well they work in comparison to the stuff that I've been using for a long, long time. Nice big one litre tin of undercoat in white. And we'll be getting a bit of that onto the body before too much longer I hope and again having a nice big tin of it is a real bonus because quite often you're putting several coats of this on rubbing it down touching it up putting another coat on so you can tend to get through quite a bit of the primer some vintage amber actually looks quite nice it looks less yellow than some of the ones I've used in the past which brings us on to the two tins of colour I'm not going to talk about that one because that's for a future project however i shall open this one up and we can all see what color i've got in mind for the current stratocaster build seafoam green and i'm quite excited about that i have wanted a seafoam green stratocaster for a very long time okay so having looked at all of that it's time to break out the white primer, fire up the spray booth and get the finishing process started. Okay, so onto the body first and before we take this anywhere near the spray booth, there is still a little bit of fine sanding work that needs to be done. I need to put a little bit of a, a chamfer on this route for the tremolo and it's a little bit fuzzy still around the edges. So we'll just clean that up, which is an ideal opportunity to use some of the new abrasive medium that I've been sent so a little bit of this 240 material and we'll see how we go well first impressions of that is I have just sanded kind of probably just under half of the way around the edge of the body and this paper is still really clean it hasn't clogged up at all it cuts very nicely very impressed with that really really clean just brushing off now normally that's as far as I'd go before I primed it, but it seems we've got the opportunity to try this out. We'll go with a bit of 400 as well and just see how that fares. And again, that's gone really nice paper seems to last a good long time okay so that's the body rubbed down to 400 grit and I've used literally one piece of 240 one piece of 400 and both of these still got loads and loads of life in them so very very impressed with those they are good so we'll get this onto its painting stick now and we can get it over to the spray booth and start to lay down some undercoats 
Okay, so time to make a start on this priming and I'm literally, I'm going to mix a bunch of this up because I have to put several coats on. And I actually want this to be quite thick when it goes on, so I'm not going to really thin it down very much either. So I'll just give this a, a splash of thinner. Give it a very good mix up. And get some of it into the gun. Okay, so that's the first couple of coats dry. I've just been over this and given it a very, very light nib off with some 400 paper. And we're ready to give it a couple of more coats and then I'm gonna leave it overnight for everything to dry up properly and we can just give it the final sanding down before it's ready for the top coats. Okay, so this has dried up overnight now and I've just spent a little bit of time going round it and just addressing any kind of slight inconsistencies in the finish. Now, the good thing about putting a primer on like this is it will highlight any little details that aren't quite right. You might just be able to see here, there was a very, very slight dip in the wood. I'm gonna say slight, you know, it was probably a couple of thousandths of an inch but it did show up so I've been able to flat out this primer and it's effectively acted like a filler 
and that is now perfectly smooth. And it's also enabled me just to kind of very subtly kind of touch in that radius because I've got a little bit more material to play with. It's all looking and more importantly feeling very nice. And I can't stress that enough. In these preparation stages, you will feel a lot more than you'll see and you'll feel it quicker as well. You might have noticed, and I do this a lot, and, and editing and watching my own videos highlights this to me, I spend an awful lot of time rubbing stuff. And I'm sorry if it looks a little bit creepy, but that's just me feeling for what's right and what isn't. And I can feel just in this area here, it's a little bit rough from the spray gun, so. We'll just give that a very quick skim over with some 400 and that all feels nice and I think we're ready to get this back to the spray booth and add a little bit more paint on it but before I do that I want to address something with this sanding stick because it's actually far too close the way I've got it set up to the end of the body and I can't really get the spray gun in there so I'm just going to turn this over I'll whip this off and just move this bit of wood a little bit further this way just so I can get into that a little bit better. Okay so I've just modified that I've made it a lot smaller hopefully there's enough material to hold it firmly still and I've also moved it away from this end of the body a little bit more and you might just be able to see there I've actually stood the body onto some washers just to give me a little bit of a gap around there so I'm not getting paint sticking to this stick and the body at the same time. So with that done, we can get this back over to the spray booth and crack on, get a bit more primer on it. And there we have the body in its final coats of primer. I gave it an additional three coats after the last bit of filming. It's been on for about an hour now, so it is dry to the touch, but it will still be very, very soft. I have to say I've enjoyed working with this material. It has gone on very nicely. It's thinned down and sprayed beautifully. And to be honest, I think this is 99.9% .9 ready to go for paint. It just needs a very, very quick nibbing off. There's one or two little inclusions that have got in there, mainly flies. There's quite a lot of flies around today for some reason. I'm going to leave this for a couple of days now to cure up just a little bit before I do anything else with it. But to be honest, that is going to be quite minimal. So on the whole, I've enjoyed working with the material. I've enjoyed wearing my new T-shirt. Black's supposed to be slimming, so that's good. Although I'm not sure how it's going to deal with the rigors of being in the workshop. It might get a little bit messed up. So the next logical step for this is to get it into color. And I have been kind of messing around a little bit and I think it's gonna look very, very nice. But that's gonna be for the next episode. I think we've gone as far as we can with this one. So I'll be back in a few days time with that. 
Don't forget to go and have a look on the Night or Light website. They've got an absolutely amazing range of stuff and I'm sure there's something that will help you get your projects finished up nicely. I'll be back in a couple of days time when we'll get this painted. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you then. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.